A few videos back, I talked about my new approach to content creation and how I was streamlining to make my brand and my content a lot more searchable and findable on the internet. And that process included me turning my YouTube videos into blog posts. So today I wanted to take you through that process and show you exactly how I do it, how I determine which videos I'm going to put into blog posts and exactly why I'm doing this and how it's working for me and my business. If you're new around here, welcome to The Winning Team. I'm Nikisha. This is a place where I help female entrepreneurs build their online business organically and make money on autopilot. And today we are talking about two of my absolute favorite ways to do that. And that's via marketing your business with YouTube and a blog. So today I'm going to show you the process that I've been testing out for the last few weeks and actually for a much longer time. I just was never consistent with it on how I take my YouTube videos and turn them into blog post and vice versa why this helps how this helps me in the search engines etc as I'm explaining this process I want you to think about this for blog post to YouTube video as well because I have found success doing it vice versa um, but today I'm going to be talking about how I take my YouTube videos and turn them into blog posts so in 2022 we know the name of the game is content repurposing but we want to be repurposing that content with a strategy behind it and have a reason to why we're doing it not just pulling content from one place and putting it elsewhere right so the very first thing that I do when I think about taking a YouTube video and making it into a blog post is I assess all of my videos from the previous months so I take a look at all the videos that I have created and I see which videos are doing well is there something that is trending right now is there something that's picking up momentum is there something that has more comments than usual? Are people asking more about a specific topic? I really go in depth into my analytics into YouTube to get this information. Now, one thing about YouTube is that the analytics are fantastic and it gives you amazing feedback on all of your videos. So you want to make sure you're getting in depth into those analytics and really finding the information that you need. So based on the videos and how they are doing, these are the videos that I will determine if I want to turn them into blog posts or not. So typically on my blog, I'm trying to post one to two times a week with one of those videos being a repurposed video that has already proven to be successful with my audience and then one new piece of content. So let's take a look here at my YouTube channel for the month of August and look and see the type of videos that did well for me. So I'm inside of the YouTube studio. As you can see, I went ahead and changed this to August because I only want to see the analytics from that one month. And then I like to go down here to your top content in this period and really just look at the videos and see which ones did well, see if there are any trends and just take a look at the type of views that each of those videos got. So I totally see a trend here. People are interested in my videos that I've been making about selling ebooks so that's amazing but I'm also going to go right here and change this to the last 90 days and see which ones are still there as you can see this one here didn't move and the ebook series looks like it is very popular so I think I'm going to go ahead and do some blog posts on the ebook series. And the reason why I'm choosing these four videos is because they have proven to have success on YouTube. And so if they're successful on YouTube, there is a great chance that they will be successful on Google as well. Now this strategy is based on previous success that I've had doing this method. And so I continue to do it this way. I am seeing when a video, especially when it's being picked up by Google when that YouTube video is being picked up by Google already and then there is a complimentary blog post to go to it typically that link and that click through will go to the blog post that has that video embedded into it and so you're going to get those click throughs to your website but also get the view on that video because you're going to have that video embedded into that blog post so these are the four videos that I'm choosing to do for this month and after I choose them the next thing I do is I send them off to be transcribed now for all 
all intent and purposes, you could take those videos and simply transcribe them yourself. If you're using Google Docs, there is a feature there where you literally could have that video playing in the background or on another device and have it type it out for you. I personally just find that it does not do it correctly and there are a lot of errors that you have to go back and correct and everything like that. And I find that just takes more time for me than it does for me to hire someone to do it. So in this situation, you have to determine whether your time is more valuable than what it would take for someone to do it for you. I have someone that does it for me and it's very inexpensive. Now in this situation, you have to determine whether your time is more valuable than the cost that it will take you to just hire someone to do it. For me, it makes so much more sense to just have someone else do it for me because the girl that I use, she's so inexpensive and she does a really good job at this. And of course, I would much rather support another female in her business. I will add her information down below if you're interested in trying her out for your transcription. I love her and she does a really, really good job. Now, once I send those four videos off to her to transcribe, she does her thing with the transcriptions and then she adds them back to our Google Drive. Now, once I choose the four videos that I want to have transcribed for the month, I send them off into an email to my content creator. Not only does she transcribe for me, she also does some other things for me on the blog as well. But I send those four videos off to her. Once she gets them, she does her thing. And once she's finished with them, she adds the completed transcription into a shared Google Drive. As you can see here, all of the videos that she's transcribed are nice and neat here in this Google Drive. And I can see which one is which and go into them and do what I need to do on each of them. I absolutely love this method because everything that she does stays in one place. We can easily communicate if I need her to edit or do anything extra. Everything is right here for her to do and for me to see. And it's just, it's easy. We can go back and forth. As you can see here, we can add notes. I can give her feedback on, you know, what to do for next time or whatever. Now, once she's done with the transcription, I can easily go into it and see what the topic of that video was. Based on the topic of that video, I then go and do my keyword research for the blog post. Now, I use Key Search for my keyword research. It's very affordable and I absolutely love how it gives results back. It's easy to read. I just absolutely love it. I go into Key Search and I do my keyword research. Based on the topic of that video, I put in a couple of keyword phrases and see which one is going to give me the best return for my website. So in this instance, I'm looking for long tail keywords that's going to have low competition but high search volume. And this is the type of keyword that you need to be looking for when you're doing your blog post. Something that you can rank for based on your domain DA and that's going to give you some traffic from Google. Because I already have some momentum from Google because this YouTube video typically is going to be ranked already on Google from YouTube. I am going to go on Google also and use it and see what keyword that this video may be ranking for. Now there may be a good chance I don't have to use key search for this particular video, but I like to do both. So I go on Google and see what keywords are going to come up for that video. YouTube gives me a lot of clues for what it's ranked for inside of my analytics. And so the job for this is is easier than a typical blog post because YouTube has already given me a lot of the information. I just can go into the video, see what it's ranked for, see what keywords people were searching when they were looking for this video and typically take one or two of those words and use that for the actual keyword of the blog post. Now, of course, in addition, you wanna find some supplementary keywords that can go with it so that you can rank for even more key terms. But typically, the information that you get inside of YouTube is going to be useful. Now, once I've determined what keywords that I'm going to use for this blog post, this is when I begin to create the headings for my blog post. Those headings are going to be based on the keywords that people are finding my video 
from inside of YouTube and they will also be based on some of the keywords that I found on Google or key search as well. I began to create my headings for the blog post and I start to insert them into the transcription that she made. Now from here it's pretty simple. I just browse and scan through the transcription that she did and go ahead and add the headings in where they make sense. Now this begins the process of a blog post being created because now you have your headings and everything like that. And at this point I read through it and begin to add more content to the sections if I feel it necessary. So this is the point where I make sure I'm meeting my minimal viable blog post requirements. The word count, how many words does my post need to be, how many times do I need to mention the keyword and all that good stuff. This is information you can find inside of Key Search and you can find on Google based on the blog posts that are ranking for the search terms you're trying to target. How many words is it? How many times do they have the keyword and all that good stuff. So this is the point where I go in to make sure that my post is the minimal viability. What is the minimal word count? You know, I don't, everyone is not the same. Some of them, you may only need 1500 words. Some you may need 2000 words. It really just depends, but this is going to be the basic blog post and eventually you can make it better as time goes on. But right now we're just getting it to, you know, the minimum point that it needs to be at. Now the content that's here, it's already going to be in my words because it's a transcription from my actual videos. But in my videos a lot of times I like to sprinkle a little sauce and ebonics on my words and so I have to change them up a little bit for a blog post. So I want to make sure that it's easy to read for someone that's reading it via a blog post versus listening to it via a video. And then as I'm adding the new content to the post, I love to make sure that my intro paragraph is really, really strong. So I spend a lot of time on my intro paragraph just to make sure it's engaging and that it's capturing the search engine and it's capturing the actual reader. And then once all that is done and everything sounds good and looks good to me. I simply copy that document out of Google Docs into WordPress itself. I love doing this because the formatting is already there. The headings are already set and I really don't have to do anything else when it comes to the formatting portion. Now, once that content is inside of WordPress, I then go in and add my photos. I typically take my own photos um, with my own camera because copyright. I take my own photos and and I begin to add them in or I create graphics inside of Canva. Now based on again your minimal viable post you should know how many photos you need inside your post and all that but I've already done all of that research and whatever number of photos that I need I go ahead and add them in at this time. This is when I add in links to any other posts that I have that's related to this. This is where I include any email opt-ins that I have for them to do and and all that good stuff. I pretty much finish off the post at this point, make it look good. And then after everything is all said and done, I like to go ahead and schedule it out. Now, the goal is to get these scheduled out at least a month in advance so I can have all of my blog content up for at least a month so that I'm not having to scramble at the last minute and do all of these things. But yeah, this is how I'm taking my YouTube videos and repurposing them into blog posts that actually work and actually drive traffic to my blog. Now, if you currently have a YouTube channel and you don't have a blog set up to support that content, I highly recommend you download my blog boss blueprint because I go in depth giving you a 12 month plan on what to do to use that YouTube content to grow your reach with a blog. You can find the link to that down in the description and I will see you all in the next video.